I think that's why this year seems so much more drastic compared to prior years because we're so used to Josh being Josh motherfucking Allen, <laughs> and we're not seeing that as often. Yeah. Right. And we're used to we're used to so we're used to seeing the interceptions and the problems, but we're also used to seeing the other side of the pendulum, those high variance plays that you talk about all the time, Eric. Like, and we're not seeing that as much. We're seeing ultra efficient, hyper efficient ball mixed in with turnovers and inefficiency, ironically. Right. Okay. So let's get into the 11 interceptions from Josh Allen so far this year. And again, try to assign the blame. If you guys are watching live, live with us now, let us know who you think should be blamed for this. <laughs> Just to get an idea, like keep a tally. Like how many times do you think it's Josh? <laughs> how many times do you think it's Dorsey? And again, take into account the context that we're going to give you, yes. in, you know, in the film, in some of the little nuggets that we have um, from, again, from knowing this offense, watching this offense several times a week and breaking <laughs> it down every week. We show our work. Obviously, you guys know that. And uh, some of the, I'll give you some of the nuggets and stuff that we know behind the scenes that kind of lead into those things. So let's jump right in. So this is the first uh, first game of the year. Uh, down the field, mm -hmm. big throw from Josh Allen. And he's trying to get it to Hardy. But, okay, we stop it right here. You know, this is a, a third and eight situation. And, and do you think that Josh could run this? Yeah, yeah, we, you know, we talked about it when we broke it down after mm -hmm. this game, like he could run it. He's that's Tony Adams, uh, the safety that you highlighted, who's coming down there around like the 45 yard line, smallish guy. You would think that Allen could either shake him or potentially break a tackle, given how much green Adams has to cover. There's also the potential opportunity if he wants to put it straight up the sideline there to Dawson Knox, who's mm -hmm. right at the near side yep. numbers, He's right there, um, which is an opportunity. And then Eric, like you have highlighted there, like, that safety on the near side hashed at Whitehead, like he's already driving deep and he's cutting off that route that's being run. It's just, it's not an ideal throw. I understand the, the whole arm punt thing that makes people feel, you know, less bad about it, but there were other easier options yes. that could have generated the first and or a chunk player explosive. And that's play. the key. That's yeah. the key for a lot of these plays. Again, when you're talking about bad decision or even in an inexcusable, which Arlovsky kind of analyzes this, this year, uh, today about, Hey, he's only had three since week one, three inexcusable plays. Again, there's a, there's a huge gap between bad decision and inexcusable. So keep mm -hmm. that context in mind. Like you said, Anthony, that, that decision, that question, okay, was this a bad decision? Was this inexcusable? Were there better options? If there are better options, I think one of them being a run here or even Knox mm -hmm. for that matter, mm -hmm. I think this one is just a terrible play. From yeah. Josh Allen, and I read this one on Josh Allen. It yeah. arm and all, it's still a bad decision. Absolutely, like I, I hate it from the perspective of there are other options available, but it's not even like the other options avail available are like low percentage. I the the Knox throw is probably somewhat of a low percentage, but he him not running the ball drives me nuts here. Like I don't know how he doesn't just. Yeah, Tony Adams is probably going to get to him around the 35 or 36. Allen could probably just fall forward through him easily. For the yeah, first man, out. we've like, seen it. Yeah, we've seen it a bunch. And then if you, as you have highlighted there for Knox, like even though that throw is a bit down the field, he is significantly open by NFL standards. And there is nobody over the top no. with Whitehead driving to the post. So... Yeah, uh, yeah, that's that. That's a. I would say we. A lot of people in the comments already saying, uh, Allen's <laughs> at fault. And then this one from Jordan says, like, Josh won, Dorsey zero. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Same game. And, and Josh was awful in this game. Third quarter, 416, 41 yard line. So they're in Jets territory. Second and 13 uh, play here. And this another one I just don't get. I don't get this throw down the middle of the field to Diggs yeah. with two guys over the top. This, uh, this one's pretty easy for me. This is another bad play from Josh Allen. Yeah, this is a brutal one. Um, I know when we first talked about it and looked at it, like he he's in the pocket and he gets that pressure bearing down on him. It felt a little bit like Quinn and Williams is rushing him right up the gut, and it kind of just felt like he was like, well, I'm going to chuck it up YOLO and kind of like see what happens. My biggest gripe with it is that it's on second and 13 and you're at the 40. So even mm -hmm. if you don't get the first down on this drive and you just get five or six yards on the next play, you're still in good field goal range and territory for Tyler Bass. And so situationally, it bothers me. And then, yeah, from a decision standpoint, there's no honoring of Sherfield coming on that post route. The safety just sits and hangs back on it and mm -hmm. drives to the post from Diggs coming from the other side. Like this route is never there. This is it's just a bad decision and a bad throw. Uh, I am in the same, same boat. This is on Allen and it's disappointing. <laughs> yeah. And okay. So I, I'm glad you mentioned that Sherfield route in, and I highlighted the safety for a reason because 
this is one of those first one of those plays that maybe a tweak in the scheme or a route by Dorsey would have held that safety. So if if Sherfield mm-hmm, again, maybe this is on Sherfield. We don't know. Mm-hmm. But we don't know. In if the route is deeper, if Sherfield pushes, you know, and threatens his safety, then kind of heads to the middle field, maybe that safety holds. Mm-hmm. So there's a detail in there that is missing. All right. Again, whether that is on Sherfield or Dorsey, it starts and ends with Dorsey. And so that little detail could have made a hell of a difference on this play. Much like the play when Diggs took this Dino post right here against the Packers. You know, they held that backside safety mm. last year and got that explosive. So, again, that's one of those things that, yeah, maybe something the staff could have done could have held that backside safety. And so that, again, could have changed the play and the result of the play. But either way, again, it, on the field, Josh has got to move on from that. He can't throw that if that back no. safety does not squat on that route. And that's a big piece. Like if that, if that back safety isn't nailing down, like there is exactly your point. Like there's something schematically to that potential to be like, okay, like, is it the design? Is it Sherfield cutting this route too short? Like that's a huge piece, but exactly your point. Like Allen has to see that and recognize that throw is not there. And then given where they were in the game from a score standpoint and game script standpoint, and then also second and 13 there, yeah. Like you had the opportunity. Um, and then yeah, you got Braden's comment there saying yeah. Allen's at fault. Like, look at Cook for the short yardage, which is something, you know, he said it. Uh, I retweeted your mm-hmm. tweet earlier. You know, you showing that piece. It's something that he said, like, kind of not getting bored with taking that underneath stuff. It it's there a bunch. And when he's been at his best, he's taken that stuff like he did against the Patriots uh in the late regular season in 2021. So if he can get back to that spot, it should also potentially limit these turnovers that we're seeing from him when he tries to press and make throws that he should not be. Yeah, here's another throw that he should not have made. I another interception one. by, um, what was it, Whitehead there, Jordan Whitehead? Yeah, yeah, he had yeah. three in this freaking, three. he has four on the year, three came in this game. <laughs> oh, God, he better not get one And this his week. other one, his fourth came uh, the past week against the Raiders, like this past Sunday night right. game. So it's Yeah, like yeah, he's, he jumped on, the, yeah, he jumped on that in-breaking route. All right, yeah. I remember so that. So it's not like he's some, like, interception maven, like he right. just nailed Allen in this game. So third and two here. So third and two situation. Keep that in mind. You got the smash concept to the top of the screen. Davis and Kincaid. Watch Kincaid. We talked about it when we broke it down. Take it. Just take it. You're right at the sticks. Take it if you want to take it right there. If not, then you got digs, right? One, two, three. One, two. Here's three. Digs coming across the middle. So just go through your progressions. Instead, he forces it to Davis on the corner. And it's intercepted. And the context I want to add to this play is the smash concept, the corner Mm. route by Davis. Okay, so you see him bend the route right at the 50. And I think it was Kurt Warner. Some national analyst said, like, yeah, that's a terrible route from Gabe Davis. Yes, it was Kurt Warner. Yeah. If you go and watch the Bills run these smash concepts, a corner, a flat route. Oh, Troy, I'm sorry. Troy Aikman said it on the broadcast. Right, right. Yeah. Um, they are, the, the wide receivers are not taught, like in most systems, hey, on that corner route, get to 12 yards, hit the corner, mm-hmm. break on 45 degrees. They're not told to do that. They're actually told to make this break on a 45-degree angle as soon as he pass the corner. Mm. The details. The devil are in the details, right? And so if a guy like Sauce right here is playing shallow because it's third and two, what's going to happen to the spacing of these two routes? It's going to be pretty easily guardable, right, Anthony? Yeah, he covers both by just kind of sitting in that void and and spacing both routes. Yep, and so they're able to obviously fall off, have the safety make a play, but, you know, the spacing's bad. It's something we just continuously talk about because, again, it's something we can see. We can see these, every smash concept, we have the database, every smash concept they've run, we can see the spacing and what they're taught. And again, knowing some of the guys on the team, it's taught differently. And that to me is a big reason why you're seeing a lot of these spacing issues and why this was intercepted. Yeah. The, the spacing and how it's taught is problematic. Um, exactly like you broke down, but I, I, I think the point of the, at the end of the day, this still comes down to Allen. Like, and yep. the, the biggest one for me is, this is the third interception of the game. This is also when the Jets have started to build some momentum. Like, you cannot have a turnover. Like, if anything, you need to kind of settle yourself. And I don't want to say play too conservatively, but you need to lean to that other side to be like, okay, 
this game's starting to kind of, so the pendulum's starting to swing to the Jets a little bit. Let me settle down, like kind of play within myself a bit more. If anything, you should be playing more to the conservative side than you are taking that chance and that risk side. Um, oh, and Cole says, seriously, why is everything to the sideline? Something we're going to talk about, yeah. The something we're going to talk about. Talk about. Um, this one, exactly like he said, though, like Kincaid is open right off the jump. It's third and two. Just hit it. You're already that side bang. Just put it to him. Lead him, lead him in front a little bit. It probably gets three at worst. Maybe he breaks a tackle from sauce and he gets a little bit more, but who cares? You want the first down. That's it. And even if you don't like Kincaid, like you said, you've got Stefan Diggs coming as the number three in the progression there across yep. the middle of the field, yeah. dump it down to him. Maybe Mosley crashes down on him. Maybe Quincy Williams you know, comes down, they've kind of put him into that alley, but he's still probably getting at least, I don't know, four or five yards, some piece like yep. that. Like the take the underneath stuff. That's it. Take the underneath <laughs> stuff, even though it's boring. Yes. Um, again, so there are some schematic and design issues with this play, but this is still poor execution gotcha. from Allen and where he went. Like, and I think Eric, that's such a big piece, right? There's so many things that have happened with this offense where there may be something less than ideal from a schematic or design standpoint, but that problem gets compounded by the decision making of Josh Allen, Josh. and and that's been that's been a huge piece with this offense this year. Yeah, I and mean, we heard that comment from Cole about all the routes into the sideline. <laughs> This sale concept, it's it's right up there with mesh for me. Which is super frustrating <laughs> because they're they're very good at sale. Like no. that's, a, that's a money concept for them. I, I don't like the tweaks. Year. I don't like the tweaks that they've done to it. And, and again, maybe this is a, a conversation for a different day. But I don't like the tweaks of the forty five degree breaks. Instead of hey, you're running a deep out route, you're running a flat route, you're running a clear. Like mm. they're getting there's too many corner breaking routes into the sideline. So again, that's a side side nugget here because we're not mm. even breaking down that play, but. It's important because, you know, that's not open to the top of the screen. So Josh has to take the arm punt to the bottom to Gabe Davis. Gabe Davis gets out muscle a little bit along the sideline, but I don't think he had a chance on this throw. But again, it's one of those plays that, you know, the, the scheme, the concept by Dorsey, like, what are you doing? Again, keep in mind, it's third down ball spotted here. This is a long mm -hmm. play. There aren't <laughs> plays in the playbook. And that's why Josh takes this. So I, this one, I wouldn't really put on Josh one, because again, it's the arm pump, but two Dorsey didn't really give him any options, period. No, the, the piece with that whole concept running into the boundary in and of itself, like even if you're timing and your spacing is perfect, it's going to be somewhat problematic because you're going to the boundary there and you've highlighted digs, you've highlighted Knox, and then Murray is open. Even <laughs> Sherfield is coming open underneath. Yeah, he's coming open. Underneath. But like you mentioned, like, even if you, this isn't like a third and seven where if he hits it down to one of them, cool, they can get the first, like they're not going to get the first down at the, at the opponent 40, even as amazing as Latavius Murray has been in the open field this right. year as a pass catcher, that's not going to happen. So I don't love like where Allen throws this ball, but I'm in a similar boat. Like I think the down and distance combined with the play call, I'm not putting this one on Josh Allen. Like, um, there's nowhere really for him to go. There's not really a high probability of a first down. If he checks it down, this is something that just didn't work out from a design standpoint. And the result is, uh, what it was, unfortunately. Yeah. And this is a third and 15 situation. So another third and long against the Jags and one of our favorite plays, uh, some people call it wave. This is double X post, uh, Z cross from the top of the screen, but Josh tries hitting digs deep. And honestly, he has them not the best throw, but he's kind of in a, in a, um, in a tunnel there as far as the pocket goes. And I'm going to chalk this one up to a freaking awesome play from Ooh. the DB. It was, uh, you know, right there. Yes. Josh could have placed it differently, but again, big throw down the field. And if you look at it from this angle, the pocket he was working with and having the maneuver right there, keep his eyes downfield, you know, change, move the ball. So it's not ripped away right there. Then having to reset, regrip, reload, and then throw it as far as he did. And then the DB makes a play right here at you know, high, high pointing it, climbing the ladder. To me, man, this is just a great play by the DB. I struggle with this one because Diggs did have a step and he does have to come back to this one on the throw. But like you said, there's all, there's all these other factors that lead to the interception, like the initial pressure from Jaguars, Josh Allen, that forces Bill's Josh Allen to have to sidestep. He has to regrip the ball, like you said. Um, it's third and 15. So the other options that are potentially give the first down, like you've X'd out there aren't open. The other options underneath at, a, at the bills, you know, 43 yard line probably aren't getting the first down if he has to check it down there. So he takes the shot to Diggs, And again, Diggs is open. He's open. 
he's open. So I would love like, – part of me says this is on Allen because if he puts this ball out in front of him or more upfield, <clears> it <throat> should have been a completion. But this is a great recovery by Williams. But, and then also, too, like – like Diggs loses at the jump point at the, at the yeah. ball, like at, at the, at the catch position, which is also like, again, a credit to Williams. He wrestles that away from Stefan Diggs. I'm torn on this. I'm kind of like 50, 50, cause there's a bunch of factors that go against <laughs> Allen here, but he still had him and could have put it out. I'm very torn on this one. Yeah, that's fair. Again, that's fair because football is complicated. There are a lot of factors and var- variables in the play. Um, by Williams and, like and honestly, we've been calling for that too. We've been calling for those crossers and that deep, deep, you know, like double post. Um, so again, you guys make your decisions, put them in the chat box. Uh, whether <laughs> you're watching one, now, this is Jordan says so. So the last one was on Dorsey, so other Josh, okay, three, Dorsey one. That. this we one's can others, that category. So others yeah, <laughs> that's fair. I like that. You know, that's a good uh audible there. Good job, Jordan. <laughs> I like it. Good call. Uh, the, <laughs> This would I chalk this one up too uh, to a good play. This is O'Kara case. You know he tips it oh. over the middle of the field. You know they're trying to hit the ball down the seam and it's intercepted by McFadden. Um, I think this was a especially when you look back at this game and how the Bills ran this uh, play earlier in the game. I think this is a really good read from O'Kara as Dawson Knox slips in behind him. He senses that route very well. He's Josh is assuming that he's not going to be there um, and he's throwing it on the line so that. Dorsey or Dorsey so that Dawson doesn't get lit up over the middle by the safety coming down, uh, down the middle of the post there. So, uh, to me, I chalked this up to a good play from O'Karake. Yeah. And, and I know, I know some people are probably going to say like, if he layers this ball a little bit more, puts it up, like it's on Allen for the ball placement potentially, but I'm in an exact same boat. I don't have too much to add. Like this is one of those, you tip your cap to yeah. the opponent and Bobby O'Karake, who had a phenomenal game yeah. in this one against Career the run game. in coverage. Yeah, he did. He a- absolute stud in this one. Um, sometimes, you know, we say it all the time. The dudes on the other side, coaches, players, they're also good at football and they get paid to play football as well. And this is a dude who got paid as a free and agent. And he's got like 34 inch arms. Yeah. Like he's got really long arms, man. Like he, he's a guy we actually liked in the off season, but yeah, yeah I'd say we're in agree- agreement there that that's probably, just a good play from Okereke. So yeah. to the Patriots game, here's that sale concept again. Mm-hmm. This time they see it versus cover three, which is exactly the coverage you want for this concept. You get that clearing route. You want this DB to get out of there. Here's your flats defender. Here's that hook to curl defender right there. And so you want Josh to anticipate this a little bit, throw it to mm-hmm. his spot, let the tight end go get it. Instead, he stares him down, stares yeah. him down and allows this guy to sink underneath it for the interception this for me is on josh allen he got the coverage dorsey got him the coverage you know with that double tight end set under center play action everything we want but josh did not have good eye discipline here and it led to the interception yeah almost i'm in agreement with you on this one i this one also made me think of like different situation and concept and spot on the field, but that first interception he threw in the low red zone against the jets in New York last year, where he just mm-hmm. did not see whitehead. I think it was whitehead again, like at yes. all, <laughs> this made me freaking to your whitehead. Uh, it makes me think like, did he not see peppers at all? Cause the way he stares down this route, like the whole time, the way he stares it down almost made me think, or like how he wants it or what he's doing. Cause he's where his eyes are now. He's, almost like holding in the middle of the field, like trying to keep that over like the defender for over the top from like driving on that piece, like almost as if he's like setting up the sail route the entire time, which made me think initially like, Oh, he's going to come back and like hit Murray underneath because it's Mm -hmm. so wide open. And yeah, he just stares it down. I don't even think he sees peppers or recognizes that he's there, especially too. Cause like he said, like the ball placement where he puts the ball, even if he is staring it down, if he leads knocks more and puts this ball more towards the sideline or towards like the 44 45 yard line out in front this yeah. can still be a completion exactly like if he yeah. leads him more upfield he's made that throw tail, and he has he's mm-hmm. done it um different way but he did it against detroit to dawson knox yep. on the same concept last dolphins. year yep. if he dolphins too like last year if he puts it more upfield that's what makes me put it on allen like the staring down but more importantly like the ball placement like even if even if Peppers isn't there, this is still a shitty throw because Knox has to stop and come back to the ball. Yeah. Like he would have literally had to stop and come back to the ball, catch it, and then get upfield. Yeah, no doubt. Yeah, I, th- I think this one's uh, on Joshy boy. 
on that one. So let's see. We're going to the Tampa Bay game. All right, this one, condensed formation under center. Uh, they're trying to run some play action here, and this one just uh, batted down. Now, this one, I'm I'm just going to – maybe this is another because uh, I yes. want the play action under center, bootleg type stuff. Um, but this was a hell of a read right here by Winfield Jr., and he's yeah. a playmaker, and he makes a play. Um, but I wouldn't really put this on anyone. So this one to me is definitely not not really Josh or Dorsey on that one. So maybe the other column, right? Yes, that, that's where I put that one. That's the other. This is another tip your cap. Uh, Antoine Whitfield Jr. made a play. Also a person who is an unrestricted free agent this upcoming offseason will probably get paid duly because noted. he is phenomenal. Yeah, <laughs> duly noted. We'll be making note of that depending on what happens with Hyde and Poyer. But yeah, yeah this is a um, – Come, come home, Antoine. Come home. Like, you're, uh, this is yeah, just a great play. Like, he makes a great read, gets his hands up. Also, too, like, I don't, I hate saying luck, but like, that's really unfortunate that the ball basically bounces straight up into the air yeah. and goes right into a high traffic area for an interception. Like, so that's, I don't, I'm not putting that on Allen or Dorsey. That's another. All right. This one's interesting. Oh, I mean, we've broken it down. We've talked about this gaudy concept. It's the option route from the slot from Diggs, Davis running the go route, honey hole shot. It, we've, We've talked about we want this in the offense, but you got to get the defense to work to underneath stuff to yeah. respect this little option route. Sometimes a stick route, sometimes a curl route. You have to hit that in volumes. That's what Josh Allen used to do with Cole Beasley mm -hmm. from the slot all the time. Why? Because you want him to trap. You want him to trap. And so that guy doesn't respect Josh Allen that he's going to throw it to Diggs again. They're not committing to that. And so Josh wants to throw that honey hole shot. The DB sinks on it. And it's just, again, a bad throw. And from top to bottom, bad decision. Again, there are options, whether that be digs quickly on the break. There are mm -hmm. options to the other side of the field. Like, there are many ways you can go with this one. That's why I put this one on Josh. Agreed. Um, Cam Taylor Britt has a very, very, very tiny amount of potential hesitation, but he's basically sinking the entire time here. He widens Gabe Davis and then sinks underneath. I don't like the decision, but then even with the decision, if he just puts this upfield more like mm -hmm. he has in the past, yeah, he could make this completion. We've seen him pull these ridiculous rabbits Multiple out of the hat. Yes. Yeah, so he's got to put this ball, and we talked about it on the show last week, he's got to put this ball in a position where Dax Hill – that half field safety over right the top here, yeah. there at the 40 yard line. Yep. The person who has to make a play on this ball for Cincinnati has to be Dax Hill. So I don't love the decision from Allen. I don't love the ball placement and where he throws this ball to. But the thing that gets me even more is exactly your point. Like you have digs, but say, you know what? You're thinking that Gabe Davis is going to come open oh. on the sideline. Mm -hmm. He doesn't. So just go to your outlet, which is James cook. Who's wide mm -hmm. open underneath. Like even if you right can't there. get to Kincaid in time, you know, which I understand you have. the. He did it later in the game. He yes, did. he did. So like that on the other side to, of the field, I didn't want to drill down on him too much. No, but like it, it's second and 10. You can come back and hit Kincaid or you can just dump it down to cook. Who's got space. I, it, so there's a multitude of decision problems with me for this one on Josh Allen. And then the ball placement is a big one, even within that. So it's just like multiple. Yeah. Black when it comes to this play. Yeah. Multiple layers of bad. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so third and fourth situation here first quarter 8 30 on the clock um this one uh from the broncos game this one's uh on gabe davis this one is a throw Oof. over the middle it, it's intercepted what okay so i was at the game and i was sitting at the 35 yard line so i was right here two rows up so i had a great view of this play and i'm watching the ball obviously it's right in front of my face and i'm watching josh <laughs> allen throw it and when he threw it, I was like, holy crap, why is he throwing that so hard? So that was my initial thought. Then I see on the back end that it gets intercepted. I don't know who dropped it or whatever. But then I see it's Gabe, and I see it's, it's a little high. But to mm -hmm. me, that he's still got to catch that. But Josh also does not need to throw it with that type of velocity, Anthony, because it makes it that much more difficult to catch the ball. The window is huge. Yeah. It's huge. And you can see Josh, he's kind of leaning this way a little bit. He's trying to get this guy to commit so that the route can, can like come in behind him. And his mechanics are off. Yeah. This is old Josh Allen mechanics right here. And again, maybe he's trying to move him. And it and really, in the end, it doesn't matter because he did still get the ball to the wide mm -hmm. receiver. But I, I just would like to see him take a little bit off that. Go back to the Rams game a few years ago when the Rams came to Buffalo in week two or three. And yeah. they were hitting these concepts perfectly in stride. Josh Allen, Gabe Davis. The touch was a lot better 
on this play on, the, on those plays than it is here. But again, this should be caught, but this is not on Josh Allen for me. Yeah, I I recognize the the mechanics, and we were talking about this one offline before yeah. we went live. Like recognizing the mechanics with Allen and how hot this one gets on to Gabe Davis from him. Um, especially with how wide that window is like, this wasn't a tight window throw where you got to put some zip on the ball to get it through there. Like this is, this is wide, wide, wide open by yeah. NFL standards. Um, and even though it is a little hot and a little off center, you got to come down with this if you're Gabe Davis. So again, this one is not, I guess this falls in the other bucket. Yeah. It's not Allen and it's not Dorsey. Um, and you just have the added unfortunate nature of, man, like the deflection going right to Justin Simmons. You could have gotten a field goal there, or maybe you go for it on fourth and four potentially down there. But uh, yeah, not on Josh Allen, not on Ken Dorsey. Um, that's another. Johnny says, was the wind of much of a factor? No, not 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 uh, that night. Definitely not. Um, fun, fun time. I got to go on the sideline and, and, and all that. That was a good time. This was a, another throw that I just didn't like. Second quarter, 45 yeah. seconds, you know, right before half, first and 10. I know Josh wants to get something going. You know, they're running a seam read. So again, it's not it's not the best. They're not trying too hard with this concept. Mm -hmm. But in the end, the route by Hardy is quite shoddy, not selling anything. Oh, I don't he even think he it. hits full speed and no, then he it, rounds it off and speed so cuts much. it. He he gains depth. He gains like three or four yards of depth from the cut. It's yeah. so frustrating. Yeah. And, and he's not again, there's no pace to his route. There's no salesmanship that he's gonna go up the numbers and go deep. So that, that DB really never feels threatened. I mean, just look at the difference in route nuance um, between Hardy up top and Diggs to the bottom. And, of course, mm. Diggs is going against Sertan. So you yep. got you to gotta have your goods against him. But even just some of that nuance between those two. So in the end, though, Josh, what are you doing? Why are you throwing this? Uh, again, you're trying to get it up and over this guy, and you're trying to get it out here you know, so that he can get out of bounds. But th this is not open. And – I don't know why you're throwing this. So for me, this one is on Josh. Like you just can't throw this in this situation. And again, they had multiple turnovers by this point mm -hmm. and you're putting your defense in a tough spot, which they did several times in this game. Yeah, this one was, uh, this whole game was very unfortunate for the bills defense with how much they came together and the plays that they were making. And yeah, I, I put this one on Allen. Like again, the concept is kind of just what it is like with the time remaining, like 40 something seconds left mm -hmm. in the first half. And you're just seeing kind of, if you can get something, um, like we talked about, I don't love the route from Hardy. The pacing isn't great. There's not a lot of deception or lying happening in the route. And then on top of it, like at, at the top of the route, he runs it like a speed out, which allows Moreau to just undercut it. Like Moreau is sitting there. They're in quarters. Yeah. The, you can't even – it was bugging me out the whole time. You can't even see – the far side safety because he's so deep and off right. screen. Like there's Simmons. And then the other safety is just driving back. They're playing super over the top here. And that's what Moreau is doing. And that's what drives me more nuts about this throw from he Allen. broke. He broke at the 37 yard line. And look where he hits when he starts flattening out the 41. Yep. I mean, yeah, you're right. He, he just rounded that off. And, and the ball, the decision I don't like, and also, I don't like the ball placement. Like, even if this was a great route, like, Josh throws this behind Hardy and mm -hmm. a bit inside significantly to the point that, you know, Moreau doesn't have to drive to the sideline and kind of make the, make the catch and tap his feet. Like, he drives underneath it, and it's almost thrown right to him. Um, I know the, the pressure kind of influences him a little bit, but there's, it's also only a three-man rush. Like, he could have just sidestepped that first rusher yeah. and not even thrown it. Like, maybe if he – again, this is – just complete, you know, pie in the sky and assumption. Maybe if he sidesteps that first one, he sees Gabe Davis clearing in the middle of the <clears> field <throat> who just got past Josie Jewell. Like there's a multitude of reasons for Allen not to throw this ball. And then the throw on top of it, the location and ball placement was bad. I know the route from Hardy sucks, um, but this one on me, same. Uh, it, this one is blah all around. I, I hate it from everything. Uh, and this one's on Allen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So again, that was kind of uh, an exercise that I wanted to do. Uh, to kind of show that, yeah, you know what? Dorsey is to blame for a lot of things. And hopefully we added some context to some of those plays where, hey, it was still Allen's bad decision, but he was kind of not funneled, but kind of directed and guided. Shepherded. Right? Shepherd. Uh, yeah, I like that. Shepherded to the bad decisions or, you know, just inexcusable type throws. But 
um that was what do you guys think of that that was pretty fun right that's uh we got a lot of a lot of engagement everybody in the chat kind of giving their thoughts i liked it i really appreciate jordan k for keeping a running tally in terms of it was josh dorsey or other also jordan k you came up with the other column yeah that's cool so appreciate that that. well done well done we should we should have had Jordan with one of us just in the back on a whiteboard, just doing like the official tally. Be like, oh, that's on Josh. Okay. And just like, marking <laughs> left, left, left. that was a good one. Games are always fun. People like interactive things. Um, it's unfortunate that that game was about failures <laughs> for the Buffalo Bills. But uh, yeah, we made it fun, fun though, right? Yeah, so fun. like everyone's kind of down and wants to fire everyone. So we made it a little fun. We don't get to do that all that often, no. especially if you're talking <laughs> about the negative. So I thought that was a good spin. <laughs> yeah, I like it. I thought it was a good time.